Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. So Bitcoin yeah, is starting to recover a little bit. We take a look at how likely it is that Bitcoin is getting, um, getting higher from here. As you know, my view is at least with a little bit more likelihood that the breakout scenario is going to make it. I talked about something like a 60-40 probability in favor of a breakout scenario. Now that could either be a bull market rally yeah, um, or a bear market rally. Yeah, some kind of a rally is unfolding in my opinion. Um, but again, it's only 60-40 probability. The odds are, or the probabilities are looking slightly better for the uh, breakout scenario. And as we take out more resistance levels, the more likely it gets. Okay. So what I'm going to show you first is the bearish scenario. This is, in my opinion, the less likely one but it is still absolutely valid. And at the moment we have to expect lower levels as well. So at the moment in this possible turnaround space, there is, um, we have to allow for both options really. There's usually, you know, a few phases in any trend. You've got the, you know, you've got, first you've got uh, the formation of a trend, the building of a bottom, that is the possible, or that is the, the process in which we currently are. We are, we are building a bottom, we're building a low, we are starting to establish an uptrend and there is a lot of uncertainty in such a phase. In the next phase then, that will then be the established uptrend. And in this established uptrend, then we have much more clarity about, yes, it is an uptrend and also about if it is just a bear market rally or if it is a real bull market rally, which could take us to new all time highs. So we don't know that yet. Okay. Um, I always get the questions in an er in an environment with rising interest rates. Why do I think Bitcoin has a chance to rally? Well, my, my question is why not? I mean, we have seen in the past a lot of times that the S&P 500, for example, went up in environments of rising interest rates. So you can't, you know, you, you can't, um, you can't use interest rates to get price targets. Um, they ha can have a short term effect. When these come out, you know, the Fed news, um, they can have a effect in terms of just distorting the chart, yeah, messing around with short term price targets. But what they would not do, in my opinion, is changing longer term price developments. They just can't. It's the same story with news. News can have a short term effect and they can act as a catalyst. They can push a chart into one scenario, but what they can't do, they can't really change the overall direction. And if the sentiment is already very scared or fear, you know, when, when you've got fear around, like at the moment, extreme fear or fear, I mean, we've moved out of the extreme fear stage on the fear and greed index, then pos positive news will push the market up. Whereas in an environment where you have an extreme greed phase, positive news are not going to do much anymore. Yeah. What is happening then when you have a lot of selling pressure in the market, and you get negative news, let's say we are at an all time high and you get some negative news, then negative news will be a catalyst to start a bear market. Same story. Now we are in an extreme fear or fear phase and here just positive news are enough to push the market up. That, that is usually because I, I get these questions in the comments every day. Um, don't worry too much about the Fed news. Yes, they can move the market down. But in my opinion, if the overall trend is up already, they won't have a, a massive effect. And to be honest, 75 basis points is probably priced in anyway. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see next week, but I wouldn't worry too much about interest rates. We've seen a, a number of examples where also in environments of rising interest rates, markets did go up. So why wouldn't Bitcoin also go up? Um, it's one of these narratives that's going around that everybody's believing prices have to go lower now because of the Fed decisions. That's a perfect environment to make a trend change. Now I'm not telling you guaranteed it's gonna happen, because the 40% probability is still pointing to a lower low and also the Elliott wave count still allows for a clear bearish scenario here, a WXYXZ scenario, where, as I said to you in the last video, I go to the four hour chart or the, no, the four hour, where in the last video we have seen the wave one down, the wave two to the upside. Yeah, that probably was finished and now, yeah, this could have been the third wave already. We are in the third wave, but within the third wave, you also have sub waves. So maybe this was the first wave and the second wave of the third wave. So the lower degree wave, we're looking at the fractals here 
and target for that third wave I can give you as well so that you know what what's coming and in my opinion this bearish scenario I mentioned it before will get much more likely <clears throat> so the target here yeah for the wave 3 that's the 1.618 extension should take us no one second I did that um No, that's fine. The 1.618 is here at uh, 20,450. I already made a dotted line here, as you can see. 20,450 is where the wave three should take us to. That is also the wave below. Indicating, on the other hand, that below that level, the bearish scenario will gain in probability. Okay, so at the moment though, there is no clarity. It could also be the bullish scenario and this just be a corrective wave, something like descending wedge or a channel in an uptrend. That is actually what I'm in favor of. Um, we've also seen a bit of a recovery already yesterday after we came at least close to this level that I gave you here at 21,800. We only reached 21,000. Uh, no, I think that was actually at 21.9. We'll have a look. Um, let's take a look where the target actually was. I think I might've moved it. So we calculate this target based on the wave A length this is, by the way, the, yeah, I have to move it up a little bit. It was 21.9. I think I moved it, but I think I talked about 21.9 in the last video. So we got it closer. Um, now, let me explain. So this is the, this is the bullish scenario. In the bullish scenario, we expected that this year was just an A, B, C correction. So looking at this, yeah, from a, from a perspective where we started at the low here, where we counted the first impulse. From the beginning, I told you that this counts as a first impulse up. Now, of course, it was too early to say if, if this is really a breakout scenario or not. Um, since we moved above 23.3K and above those previous highs, I made the bullish scenario the primary expectation. For now, it's actually looking good. Okay, so we moved up in a wave one, we came down in a wave two correction. We are now moving up in this third wave, but in the third wave, we have sub waves as well. So in the subwaves, we have seen already probably the wave one. Yeah, we are coming down now in a wave two, and the next wave would be a wave three to the upside. In this scenario, we expected the price to come down to at least the 38.2% FIB level at 22.2K. So I told you yesterday at 22.2, this could have been it because we moved with that wave C below the low of the wave A. We touched the 22.2 level, but I told you probably we come down a little bit lower because at, when we touched it, there was no bullish reaction. So we dropped lower. As you can see, we came with 21.95. We came very close to that 21.88 level here that I gave you as a target for the wave C. That could have been it, to be honest. You know, that could have been it. And we saw a reaction to the upside. So I told you, I hope we will hold above 21.6 above this um, above this support range, which we did. Yeah? You can see we actually touched, or we actually, um, and that's quite fun, you can see how this stuff works together. I just calculated with the Fibonacci extensions, the one-to-one -one ratio here of at 21.9K um, for this dotted line. This is exactly the high of the wave one. So we retested basically the high of the wave one. And if this is holding, this would be quite bullish, but it's too, too early to be, become optimistic. Yeah, um, in the previous video, I told you to be more confident that this wave two is over and the wave three has started. I would like to see at least a move above 23K, but this is no guarantee yet. A better would be a move above the wave B high at 23.7K. And then the real evidence is there above 24.3, of course. That's the wave one high here. But as you can see, what has evolved is some kind of a channel can even draw it a bit different if we don't use the wicks, just the closed, um, the closed candle bodies. So some kind of a descending wedge where you can see that if we get above this breakout point, which to be honest would probably be something around somewhere in this range here, if we break above that, yeah, then we can be more confident. It's a bit of a, a bull flag actually, you could call that. That also shows you why I see this current move down as corrective because it is, you have these overlaps um, the move down is not as strong as those movements to the upside were. Um, you currently see a lot of green candles here coming up. 
So that could have been it, but um, I would like to see clarity above that 23k level and the breakout of the of the channel. Yeah, so this is currently what we're looking out for. And then, yeah, the target for that wave 3 would be around 23k. So that's currently how it's looking like, okay. Um, so someone also asked me how I labeled this white wave 3. Uh, I want to take you through that because I think there was some uh, confusion and um, it's a bit of a messy wave 3 but totally valid wave count so um, just to really answer answer that question so you can see that from the low here at 18.9k we moved up in yeah basically a wave 1 came down in wave 2 then we entered this wave 3 so this is what the question really is about how how was this wave 3 labeled okay and we can take a look at that um, basically we would start with within the wave 3 with a wave 1 so this was a wave 1 with um with an ending diagonal for that uh, fifth wave of the wave 1 so just make that that's the wave 1 that's the wave 2 then that here was the wave three, this one here. Then we've got the wave four down here. Yeah, not overlapping, as you can see, not overlapping with the wave one. One, two, three, four. And then the fifth wave here to complete that wave three. Now within the wave uh, three in green, yeah, I think that's what it's about now. Um, you can also see an impulse, okay? So um, we had here the wave one. Do another color. Then we were here coming down to a wave two, not making a lower low before the previous one. Then the next one was a wave three and then this one was the wave four and then this one is the wave five yeah just really to show you uh there are different ways of, of doing this yeah this wave one there's there's two ways of counting this there's one where you put the wave one here um there's actually various options you can put the wave one here here or here but none of that is changing the overall uh further development so yeah, this is how this is counted and an absolutely valid count. Wave one and four do not overlap anywhere. Um, the wave three is never the shortest one. And um, the wave two never ends below the wave, the, the beginning of the wave one. So it's a perfect valid count. Um, and on the lower time frames, you can count five waves in each impulsive wave. So yeah, just to show you really um, and that's my view about Bitcoin at the moment. So hopefully you like the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.